It always comes to this. guys back again to do another tattoo progress update today where i last left off i had showed off uh the work that rick had done on my my lower arm here the ironically the arm of the monster here the, the claw here and some of the uh, bold and black again on the other side here uh, i'm assuming we're going to be doing the uh color and shit in here um fairly soon seems to be what his approach has been lately um, yeah, so most of this is healed up fairly well. Um, there's just some stuff that's still flaking off, but you can see the color is in there. Pretty goddamn good this time. It's more in line with the top and, uh, just kind of getting it all up to this level would be perfect. Um, I could be happy with that. Obviously it's taking some time. Um, I had another session with Terry prior to that. We did, uh, uh I'll just spiderweb boldening on my chest and neck clavicle area and my arms or arm and uh all of that healed up really really easy obviously the lines are never ever hard to heal um i don't find them actually that painful either which will uh bring me nicely to my next uh my next point here i had another session uh just yesterday with terry and uh, this one's been a long time coming, obviously. I've been uh, talking about my theoretical back piece over black for longer than my back has been blacked out. And uh, I had some, like, I would say apprehension about, like, blacking out my back because the, the initial blackout seemed almost overwhelming, the concept of doing so. Um, I didn't really want to be doing it in a traditional sense, like you would with a black arm or um, even a black leg, I wanted to kind of like get that out of the way and not worry about it. So I did something that I frequently tell people not to do. And this is again, a big upfront uh, kind of, you know, I feel I can sometimes do things that I wouldn't recommend other people to do because I've been tattooed so much that, uh, not just that I know what to expect, but also I feel like my body has gotten very used to it, or at least the way that I live is facilitating um, doing these kinds of things without really worrying about the dangers. But we blacked out my back in um, one session, and then we came back and we did the whole thing again for the second pass, and we even did uh, most of my butt that time as well. Um, it was a very wild... They were both pretty wild sessions the first one was um, more painful because anytime you're um, establishing color or black of any like whenever you're doing the first pass of color saturation which ba that's basically what blackout is if you want to boil it down to nuts and bolts um, it's you have to push harder and you have to build that color in and um, there's just there's just more work done overall so that first session was like you know, it was pretty painful, and I had a, I bled a lot, and uh, um, it was a good day. Like, I enjoyed doing that, but it wasn't really like I was, like, I wasn't really thrilled about the aesthetic of it. It wasn't like, you know, I'm happy for the blackout, because by the, the time I got to my back blackout, most of my black work was done, um, or, like, already being covered, obviously, this just being last September. And so, like, blackout for me is, it's just a tool now. And um, if at any point I did it just for the look of, like, like liking the look of blackout, like, that has kind of um, passed. And it's not that I don't like the way blackout looks. It's just that I didn't really feel, it feel, felt a little bit like when I laser someone here where I feel like I'm taking something away. I'm not giving them something. Now, obviously, it's not uh, it's not to that level because uh, I do still enjoy blackout, but um, it wasn't the, the 
the fun toy that I was interested in. It was just a uh, means to an end um, to facilitate a, a large scale cover up project. Um, so the session that I had yesterday was much, much more um, rewarding and a lot less painful too. A lot less like a lot less of an ordeal though. It did not f form the memory that the, either of the back blackouts did. See, this is where it's interesting because I am happier with the aesthetic, but the the path there wasn't um, it wasn't as you know painstaking and it wasn't as like gory and kind of like I don't know. It wasn't the journey. It wasn't like the trial and that the the uh, rebirth sort of feeling you get with. Uh, heavy pain you know like a lot of pain for um change you know i didn't get any of that i did however get an image that i'm much happier with i'm gonna try and show it off i knew this was gonna be a tough one because all these back logs i'm gonna do i'm gonna have a hard time i'm just gonna be talking about um, a back piece that i can't really show off in the video very well but uh i'll have pictures up here so See if this does the trick. I'll stand back a little ways here. Hopefully that guy that gave you guys uh, a look at it, but there'll be pictures and video in here. Um, well, one picture. We only took a couple pictures. Um, we took a picture of the stencil and we took a, a picture of uh, the finished product outside. Same thing. We took a video of the stencil and video outside. When Terry stenciled it on me finally, which getting this thing set up took... I would say about two, three hours. Um, he said, man, that stencil worked out. That makes a guy's dick hard. <laughs> Cause it's like, usually when you're putting a stencil down, that's that big, there's going to be at least one part of it that doesn't go on well, but nope, not in this case. Um, it, it all went on really well and it all stayed on really well. He didn't lose any of the stencil. So it was meant to be, it took five pages of, uh, uh, legal paper. I always get letter and legal mixed up, but I think it's legal paper. <laughs> I'll, I'll double check this while I'm editing. Um, he thought he could do it with four, but my back is broader at the top. So he ended up using a middle page for the uh, the center and then um, two two pages on the either side and then two at the bottom. Um, and the whole thing was lined out with uh, seven and 15 mag, believe it or not. And uh, we want big, bold line. All of the the smaller details and most of the thing was done with uh, a 7 mag. And then some of the, the broader lines, like the, the edge of the horns and some of the, the features, like the hand and stuff, were um, done with uh, the 15 mag. I didn't know which mags we would use. I knew they'd be mag lined. I figured it would be a 7 and an 11, but... Um, the 11 mag was used. It was only used to pack red in the, the eyes. Now, um, I thought we would just do the lines and, uh, that would be enough. I was actually expecting the whole thing to be a lot more painful, but it ended up being a very, very chill day. And, uh, I was just, you know, I was alert and talking shit the whole time. And I, I didn't really have to go into that, uh, pain cave area that I, would have to go into even for say um my sides or stomach tattoos usually like you'll know i'm in pain i will never make a noise i'll never complain the way that you can tell i'm in pain is if i'm quiet and my sometimes my last resort is if i close my eyes if i have my eyes closed it generally will mean that i'm in a ton of pain because there'll be people who they'll see videos of me getting tattooed and they're like jesus christ that guy doesn't feel any pain he's sitting like a rock it's like there are things that you can do like like mentally to kind of uh, like focus or, or take focus away or kind of shift focus and uh, divert. Some people like to clench their toes or whatever or whatever. Like some people squeeze like a, a grip toy or some fucking thing. But for me, it's like a, a tell for me is if my eyes are closed and I didn't have to close my eyes at all. It was a very, very easy session. Like I said, I was talking shit the whole time. I was, you know, I'm just, yeah, just casual. It was very, very easy. 
I don't know why I thought, like, oh, you know, like, I don't know if it's because of the big, bold line. I was like, okay, well, this might be a pretty painful set. But, like, it was pretty chill. We started at the bottom of the thing because Terry didn't want to lose his stencil, muck it up by working down. And it was honestly for the best because, um, you know, the worst of it for me in any back tattoo, and it's been the case any time I've had my back tattooed, which has been a lot of times, it's not as much as my front, but it's getting up there now because obviously uh, I uh, I had my back blacked out fully twice and I had a, a full back piece that was uh, very well established and, and that had a lot of rich black in it too. And um, I had some things changed in that and altered and I had an original back piece that we added to and all these different things. Um, so... Yada, yada, yada. I've had my back tattooed a lot. And um, the only really painful part of it for me has ever been my lower back. And that was probably the same today, uh, this last time. Um, I have a cluster of nerves that whenever you touch my lower back, it just buzzes. Like, it sends vibrations through my whole body. So, um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty sensitive. But starting with the worst is always best. I always tell people if they're planning on getting their nipples tattooed in the middle of like a chest session, not only because the work will saturate better before your skin is tightening up, um, you should always go for the, the most painful part first because um, like once you're through that, it's kind of all downhill from there. So it's, it's just easy. And uh, I feel like when you reach the worst part at the end, you're kind of tapped out and your body is a little more sensitive anyway. And so everything that you experience from that point is more painful than it probably needed to be. So when you're reaching the worst parts at the end, it's like they're going to feel even worse than they would have. Um, yeah. So if you're wondering how to approach a project like that, that would be my recommendation. I would get the worst out of the way first. Um, but, you know, right away when Terry started, he's like, oh, yeah, this is going to be quicker than I thought because he was making pretty quick project. Uh, Pro, uh, he was making pretty uh, quick progress through the the early parts of it, but then when he got into the middle area and kind of um, lower part of the face there, he started kind of losing steam. Not steam, but losing pace just because there's a lot of work in there. And uh, you can't really take any shortcuts with something like this. It's all got to be, you know, super lined out and super solid. So, um it did. It took quite a while. We were at it for five and a half, six hours, something like that. But yeah, it never got really, really painful. And uh, so midway through, I, I said when we were about halfway through the back, I was like, yeah, we can probably try some color today, like see how it goes. Um, I was just, I always uh, under promise over deliver with, with all things in life. It's like, um, I would rather just say, let's do the lines because I don't know how I'm going to be feeling at the end of it. Like I, I could have probably sat another five or six hours on that to be honest but the skin was tightening up and uh so um we just did the eyes terry tried to get a little bit uh, uh ambitious and put some yellow in but um when your skin's tightening up and you're trying to put you know color into black it's pretty obvious that it isn't working like when you can try and pull that shit on negative space like normal skin and maybe you'll have some success but when you're putting color into black if it's not working it's not working it just bounces off i've seen it a million times with my chest piece and um my in my left sleeve rick will be trying to run some color then you wipe and it's just there's nothing there once the skin's had enough all you're getting is scar tissue from that point on so it really is just best to just leave it at that um, come back to it another day with that said getting the red into those uh, eyes was a smart choice because um, we want the red in the eyes to be the absolute brightest point in the tattoo which will mean three to four passes of red most likely um, we would only ever do three normally but I want those things to be glowing so um, getting that first pass in there and then we can just hit it you know as we as we uh, proceed with the tattoo so, yeah, overall good session, and I'm going to talk more about this in part two. So, I'll talk to you guys again soon.